In 2007, I was working on a story about traffic at Dodger Stadium. The Dodgers had just implemented this new system called controlled zone parking or segmented parking, and it was working wonders. And I'd heard they'd done a lot of system analysis in the process, and I wanted to understand more. So I drove to Dodger Stadium and went to the executive offices and interviewed Dick Kaku, who was one of the leading traffic engineers in Southern California, one of the big brains behind the Dodgers' new system. So I'm sitting across the conference table with Kaku, and the first thing I ask him is, so what was wrong with the old system? And there's this brief pause and in a completely matter-of-fact tone, as if the answer were patently obvious. He just says, well, they let human beings make choices. So I instinctively laugh, because that's really funny. But to Kaku, it was no laughing matter. I mean, here's a guy who's been his entire life as a traffic engineer, and he'd been studying congestion, and the fact that there would be absolutely no method to the madness was completely offensive to him. Prior to his coming aboard, there was only one factor that governed the parking lot at Dodger Stadium, and that basically was, hmm, where do I feel like parking today? That was it. You drive up to the booth, you pay your money, you would enter the stadium, you drive around one of the 21 terraced lots that hold 16,000 spots, you'd pick a spot to your liking, you'd probably trap a couple of spaces on either side of you. And it was a complete disaster. There's a reason that old trope about the Dodger fans come in the third and leave in the seventh. I mean, who can blame them? So after the 2006 season, after decades of being a punchline, the Dodgers get smart. They hire these traffic engineers. And the first thing the engineers do is start collecting data. And in this respect, they're not that much different than front office guys who measure warp or dips. For instance, the engineers wanted to know the ABR factor at Dodger Stadium. ABR is average vehicle ridership, or the number of people arriving at the stadium divided by the number of cars. And they wanted to know the ABR factor on Wednesday nights against so-so teams versus, say, Saturday nights against a glamour team. Dodger Stadium has four gates, so they wanted to know what percentage of cars enter and exit out of the respective gates. They wanted to know zip code data, which had never been collected, just so they could simply know where people were coming from. As the data came in, the engineers set up the system accordingly. For instance, turns out the Golden State Gate gets more cars on weekend games than weekday games. So what do they do? They set up a contingency lot on Saturdays and Sundays near that entrance. As the 2007 season got underway, the biggest challenge for the engineers was getting the existing stadium ops people on board. because. You can design the perfect system. You can collect all the data in the world in your fancy mission control group, but unless you get the people on the ground to buy in, it's not gonna work. And changing behavior is tough. You not only have to change the behavior of 50,000 fans who think they know best, but you also have to change the behavior of the people directing them, those who've been in parking lots directing traffic for 40 years. Little by little, the ops people bought in, and despite the initial uproar, the fans did too. And meanwhile, the engineers continue to identify kinks, bottlenecks, or pinch points in the lot that gum things up, and they've smoothed those out. In 2006, it took on average for 58 minutes to empty out Dodger Stadium after the game. Under the new system in 2007, they brought that number down to 36 minutes. Dodger Stadium isn't alone. Teams are conducting all kinds of studies, using analytics to determine how most efficiently to get cars and pedestrians in and out of venues. Take City Field where the Mets play. In their inaugural season there, Sam Schwartz Engineering performed flyovers. Minute by minute images were captured. And the data and pictures showed that traffic should be diverted in a different way on Tuesday than it is, say, on a Saturday. The people who were building Barclays Center, they're considering the individual walking rate, or IWR, of fans so they can determine how best to steer people in and out of the venue. They're going to consider the fact that people who sit in the upper bowl are more likely to take public transportation than people who sit in the lower bowl. They're even going to consider what percentage of fans use the restroom after a game so that they can prevent human bottlenecks around those spaces. Analytics isn't just the province of the front office. It's spreading to the people who are in charge of the fan experience. And if you're a person who drives to a game or wants to avoid a hassle leaving the arena, that's really good news.